Okay, so I've got my <coughs> boring jig here. It's uh, a variation on a, just a simple three peg holding system. So the two pegs over here I've changed into V blocks. So it holds the, <coughs> the piece level this way. And uh, then I've got a mirror here for my bevel square. And I've got rare earth magnets in there because my T bevel square is metal. And, so it just holds it in place, uh, and uh, that's uh, you really don't need the magnets when you're using a bit brace like this. But sometimes, especially in classes, I'll use a cordless drill and or with a, a brad point, and uh, it works out good if I have a, uh, a if this thing doesn't vibrate vibrate off. So. Uh, Anyway, so it just locks it, and all these angles don't really matter, you know, I just, everybody's always asking me what the angle of the mirror is, it doesn't matter what the angle of the mirror is, I don't think, as long as you can see it. Um, Alright, so I'm going to lock on the stretcher here. Um, and when I've got just a single bobbin there, the wedge likes to drop down, so just put a little block under it, about like that. Now getting it top dead center is tricky, so I just sat right over it, try to get it, and a little trick in making sure you have it is you can take one of these drawers, you can take, it's a good use of a spade bit, you can take one of these spade bits, like this is an inch and a half, and this stretcher is an inch and a half, you can just set it right on your center, bring back the uh, shank right along the center line of the turning, and then you can tell if you've got an even amount on this side and an even amount on that side. And uh, if you need that, you can, you can use it. Uh, so that says 84.5. I can just set it right up there, and then go at 84.5. Now, like I said, you could drill, you know, you can drill a hole all kinds of different ways and you come out with the same thing, a hole. Uh, so whatever method you want to you wanna use, this is, I like using the bit brace, so that's why I use it uh, most of the time. And, uh, and this bit, some of you are familiar with it, it's not a typical auger bit, the, it's not the Russell Jennings pattern that you see, it's a, uh, uh, it's called a Cook's. Uh, pattern and it's got little mustaches that come down. I like it because it doesn't have much resistance it's resistance so it has like half the torque to go in. Uh, it can go in at any angle so it's like a combination between it's the benefits of an auger bit with the lead screw on it and the benefits of a spoon bit. So that's why I use it. The downside to them are hard to find. They're hard to sharpen. I'm just to put the bevel square to where the front of the blade is at the back of the bit to where I can see the distance there. Well, you know what? I got to make sure I got a mark on this thing. Yeah, I got a mark right there. And I reckon that's about what I, what I need. Let's see. Well, it's close. Let's see where that mark is. Oh, it's right there. I ought to be able to see it. Where is she? She's right, right there on the back side. I believe I'm there. Now if I can just get it out of the way. Well, I should tighten that up, shouldn't I? One way to tighten it up where it won't fall out is with the claws of the hammer. 
There we go. That ought to work. Now I always remove my bevel square so I don't drill the wrong angle. And take that out. And if I had a rule, I'd measure just to make sure I was right. I got one right here. Six right there. Let's see. Just exactly what I want. One inch. Okay. Set the other one up. Try to get that top dead center. Get my block up there. <clears throat> now this is 83.5. Eighty-one, eighty-two, eighty-three point five. There we go. Make sure that's not hanging down. That'll get you right there. Now I can count the turns too, although with this Cook's Patent bit, because it only drills, the, the threads pull it through, so it only deals, drills as fast as the number of turns that you have. So I'm right at about 21 turns to the one inch deep, but the Cook's Patent bit just is not quite as accurate with the counting as I get with the Russell Jennings. Uh, this lead screw is really small and in this oak it can uh, strip out strip out with you okay I can toss that away and then let's see got to, got my rear legs here first you can see how the v-block always holds it even no matter what the shape and the three peg holding system with the wedge can hold it tight uh, well, I'm going to have to use my beat block there, Don. It's only hitting one bottom. And that says 70. 70 is pretty steep. So if you're drilling this with most bits, you're going to have to start up a little bit. And it depends on what kind of bit you're using, how much you have to start up. Spoon bits, you have to start almost vertical or they'll scoop with you. But then you can just lean back wherever you want to go. Uh, auger bits, you, you, you can't really start vertical and come back very easily because it can, it, it can snap the uh, lead screw off. Plus it just doesn't allow for that movement. Uh, so it's difficult to bore a steep hole with an auger bit, or you can start in at the, at the angle, but you might pull out a chip on the obtuse side. This Cook's Patent bit, you can start in at any angle, but what can happen is the bit can scoop just a tad bit if you don't at first seat the lead screw. And this v group it probably won't, but uh, so anyway, with that said, I'll drill a hole. Remove that like I usually do. Even though I know I'm getting ready to <clears throat> I'm getting ready to drill another rear leg and I know it was 70, it's just the habit that I formed because I've drilled the wrong angle before because that was up there so you know you okay Thank you. 
So this is the front leg and it's 76. Always check it after I lock it down. It's moved with me before. It's fun. this bit cuts so sweet and love using this bit brace. They're just it's a nice combination. I like the sound. Six point five. Seventy six. I need a point five there. Aim small, miss small. Okay, got the holes bored. That's great. Now we get to uh, glue it up. But I guess first, before I start doing the glue, is I'll make some wedges so I have the wedges ready. I don't want to have the glue all over the place and then me say, oh, I've got to make some wedges. So I'm going to make the wedges first. I'll show you how to do that. And, uh, and then we'll glue it. Okay, so I've got a little wafer of, uh, or a block of uh, oak here that I've split out. And it's about the size. It's you know, bigger, but I'll trim it to size here for these three-quarter inch holes over here, 11 sixteenths inch holes. So I'm going to split it in half first that way. And I'll turn it this way so you can maybe see better what I'm doing. And now I'll just split some wafers off. So four is what I need. That's just what I'll split off. And then I'll take it here to this just L-shaped block. And put the wide chisel on it. Now I need the sizing for the hole, and now I can put a little mark on it there and split it. And it's probably just the least bit big, and a good way of doing it, a safe way, 
I usually do it the unsafe way, but safe way is the best way to do it. And it's also just accurate and pretty cool way. So you just size it about like that. And I make them exactly the, the same size. So uh, uh, you don't want any pressure going out that way on them and, and you don't, don't need it. there. That's pretty good. Still need a little bit more sticking out there. There we go. Now we're ready to put glue on everything. 